everybody, welcome to The Wild Dog Way. I'm Jessica. And I'm Kevin. And today's video is the return of our homeschool show and tell series for the 2021-2022 homeschool year. So if you are new here and you don't know what the homeschool show and tell series is, it is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. We bring homeschoolers together from around the world to really just show that there's no right way to homeschool. So each month we have a topic and all of us come together and we all talk about it so that you can see many different takes on the same topic. This month's topic is a meet the teacher tag because Abby and I really wanted to meet all of you guys. And since there are two teachers in our homeschool, that's why I have a co-host today. Mm. All right, so if you wanna join us, there will be a link in the description box. You can just click on it and it will take you to the 2021-2022 schedule as well as the meet the teacher tag questions so that you can see what we're answering today. You ready to get started? Sure. Okay, the first thing is introduce yourself. So why don't you go first? All righty, I'm dad, Kevin. Um, basically a military veteran, truck driver, uh, always worked in the trades, labor, never home, missed out on all the good stuff. Last year, came home, now I get to do science and math, so I really got the easy, best part of everything, I think. So, that's pretty much us. We, I mean, we live in Florida, everybody knows that. <laughs> Yeah, very hot, sunny, in the middle of the nowhere woods is what Emily calls it, Florida. I like it. I do too. We live in the middle of nowhere on a very nice piece of property, though. Yes. So I'm Jessica. Most of you guys know that. Um, we have homeschooled since the beginning. We are homeschooling an only child. Emily will be going into fourth grade if we're keeping grade level. She's nine. Um, I was a photographer who loved what she did. Um, had a baby, didn't want to let her go. Somehow we ended up homeschooling. It was never our plan, but I'm so happy that that's where we've ended up. Um, and we love it. It's become who we are and it's like our lifestyle and it's just part of what we do. It's part of our everyday life, I would say. Definitely every day. Yeah. Okay, question number two. How many years have you been homeschooling? Like I said, we've homeschooled since the beginning. Emily is going into fourth grade. So I have been homeschooling for five years going on my sixth. Mm, I haven't been homeschooling with them but for about a year now, but before that I was the explainer. Uh, <laughs> let me explain. Uh, basically, if there was useless information to be had, I've got it stored, and uh, I would get asked some very random, crazy questions and give them the answer, and that's where I became the explainer. And now I get to explain all the time because I'm home. And what's so funny about that is I, before we got married, I would, I would call it useless knowledge because his head is just full of all the stuff. And then we got married, we had Emily, and we started homeschool. And I'm like, you know, all that useless knowledge is finally, like, it's finally getting used. And for the longest time, I would check behind him. He'd give an answer, and I would, like, be Googling it behind his back. And I'm like, dang. She's not the he... only one. <laughs> Mother-in-law's everybody. They, you know, like, how they, do... There's no way. There, that is not How do true. you know it all? And, yeah, it's funny. I, I It's a challenge, personal challenge, and I it, like accepting personal and challenges. And you just know so much random stuff. Yeah, like, because I'm old. <laughs> Okay, we'll go with that. Okay. All right, next question. Do you have a homeschool style? I would say our style really is that we live a learning lifestyle. It really does just kind of weave itself into our day, and it just is what we do. It's like our family culture almost. Well, but I, if I have to get out my wallet on this one. I'm going to go with the 50-cent word. I probably won't pronounce it right. Eclectic. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> that's it. right. Okay. I was going to say, if we have to put like an official homeschool style, I would say eclectic. Yeah. Leaning more heavily towards unit study and maybe even unschool. Like if you had to put, you know, like homeschool style words, we would be eclectic, leaning more towards unit study and unschool. I freak out when you were talking about unschool. <laughs> I'd break a mortar. Unschool. That sounds like the opposite of school. Yeah. When we first started homeschooling, I will say this since we're talking about homeschool styles. When we first started, we were very traditional because that's all I knew. Like our homeschool room looked straight up like a preschool. ABCs, one, two, threes, Dr. and Seuss, rainbow. Cat, yeah, it was exactly yeah, like was a preschool um, because that's all I knew. And then as I learned more, I loosened up more. But Kevin 
wasn't ready to loosen up yet. And so he would come home from work every day and he would expect a pile of papers on the table. Like, what did you guys do today? And what we did needed to be in physical form. You needed to see it. That's that's the way I grew no, but up. That, that, yeah, that's but you what needed I expected. To see it. I like, needed it. Yeah. What we did, our fruit of our labor was worksheets for you. Yeah. And I really held on to that for the longest time. I mean, I gave grace and... And I was understanding and I was yeah, supportive. Yeah, you but, weren't rude or mean, but no, you you would just but, be like, hey, what, what have you guys been up to lately? Yeah, yeah. I wanted, and then when, you know, she's reading the book to me and it's brown bear, brown bear, and she nails it. And At three and a half years yeah, old. <laughs> yeah, and certain things, you know, you can't argue with that. That's facts. Um, but I think what really kicked it off is when we started playing games as a family. Yeah. I mean, like, religiously. We were playing games all the time, and uh, I think what sealed it for me was taking Yahtzee and doing math and watching in a Christmas holiday her math skills just bloom and blossom. Growing leaps yeah, and bounds right in, in front six of weeks of time that we were not even doing school. Right, like, right. Yeah. So, and I will say after that, you, like, you would loosen up. Like, ev in every school year, I think we both have loosened up more and more i tend to be even more loose than you and so i'm kind of dragging you along with me mm -hmm. but i feel like we are we are opening up and we're more but we're, think, we're being think, more confident in ourselves each year i think it, too it's weird it's if you stand back and watch and i could do that a lot yeah she, they're unschooled and they're loose and relaxed not all the time um at the beginning, right around August, when we're getting ready yeah. to go back to school, um, it's nuts. We have Planning, like, we have like building, a seasonal ordering, flow. Laying it up, getting it planned out. Everything's cookie cutter. Everything's in the box. Everything's ready to go. And then <laughs> up until about Christmas, you're hitting it so hard, it's unreal. And then you go on Christmas break, and it's like, okay, we're doing the holidays. And we and, never really completely come back from that. And you don't. But then... The spring Towards hit, spring hit, and summer. And you're thinking it's the end of the school year. And, and you then pick the, up pace. Everybody's panicking. But it's not just her and it's not just me. It's I'm watching on, you know, the, the, the groups and I'm watching these other moms going through the same thing. And it's like, did you get it all in? Did you do it? Yeah. Which it's funny now because I can say that looking back because we've been doing this for five or six years. Mm -hmm. I don't really panic as bad anymore because I mean I still panic don't get me wrong but yeah, not did. nearly as bad as before no. because I know like from August till like November we are like gung-ho then from November to like March it's like hey we're not gonna get anything done and then from like April to like June or July we're gung-ho again it's like it just kind of like ebbs and flows and now I'm okay with that but it yeah it took a while to get there okay so the next question is what is your favorite subject to teach my favorite subject to teach is anything language, literature, reading. I love, well, I love books, <laughs> but I really just like the English language. So anything that I get to read aloud or read along with her or write or really any linguistic type of thing, I love, which also means that I love history because we do most of our history through read aloud. So as like a, like a sub like, you know, bystander type of thing. I love history too. But if I had to pick only one subject that I would teach, like, for the rest of my days, it would be literature and language. What about you? What's your favorite subject to teach? Mm, hands down, science. Um, I, I enjoy the eye-opening moments on the crazy, messy ones, the, the taking it out of the box, and we do a lot of the... Um, the boxes where we'll get the stuff in. We'll kind of talk about what we want to do. We'll pick through, pick the ones that we're really interested in, and then you open them up and have fun, make a mess. And, and I, I think one of the things that's so funny about that is the one thing that I always felt like our homeschool was lacking before you came home mm -hmm. was like the messy part of science, right? Not the knowledge part, because I'm really great about teaching it through books. I'll read it aloud all day long. Yeah, you, you, about the part that she would take it was a sensory bin because it was yeah, contained. It was contained. Yeah, I didn't like messes. So I, I think. I clean them up afterward, but I like explosions. Like literally, you guys, I'm not kidding. I have pictures, not video. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll insert a picture here. Ceiling they did wall. they did elephant toothpaste the other day. And if you've never seen our homeschool room, there is like a cutout where it goes in like in the wall where it goes into the kitchen. The elephant toothpaste exploded so much it went onto the ceiling and through the window and we were like finding it in the kitchen the next day. It was all <laughs> over us, the ceiling. It was the in walls, Emily's hair. It was great. I would never have done that experience. It but cleaned he, up. He's he cleans it up. They had a blast and she's still talking about it weeks later. So it was a win win for me because I didn't have to clean it up. And a win-win because Emily loved it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the new science kits, there's so many new toys out there. And if you're, like, older and you never got to play with toys a lot, especially... You're living vicariously through oh, Emily. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was worth coming home for. Yeah, it was. Okay, next up. If you could only choose a three homeschool tools, what would they be? Ugh. Can, right. can I choose the whole homeschool room as one? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Um, I'm going to have to stick with, first and foremost, my love, which is art. So anything art-related, and we'll just put that in one. Um, <laughs> all art supplies, right? <laughs> all art supplies. Um, I, I like tablets and computers and all that stuff. It's okay, but I get frustrated with them. So Yeah, you have technology illiterate sometimes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I caveman beat it with club. Um <laughs> I, manipulatives. I, I like uh, trying to sh explain something, but having something that I can represent my idea with, it seems like it comes yeah, across better. Do. So I like manipulatives. Um, and then I think my go-to is, like I said, the boxes. The subscription boxes. Oh, you oh, you yes. love subscription yeah, boxes. I love them. They come in, they're prepped, they're ready. It's a surprise when they come in and what's going to be in them and how far you get to take it. And, yeah, we do crazy stuff. We we look for stuff. When I go out, I'm looking. And I think what we picked up the other day, we picked up lemons where you can do. Oh, yeah, the lemon clock. Where yeah, you can make we're going to do clock. a lemon clock. I, like, I can't wait to do that one. I mean, just crazy stuff. Just having fun with it and, it, you know, exposing her to these new things and i mean they're old things but for her everything's new everything's and you like to open. play with the toys uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah okay so if i have to pick three things and i don't get to pick the whole homeschool room i think my three things like that i couldn't live without would be books and games like hands down books and games and then if i can put them together and say my laptop and my printer like we're gonna call that my third one because with books and games I can do almost anything, and where that fails, <laughs> my laptop and my printer, I can make everything else. So, I mean, I think books and games are probably, honestly, if, I would say between the two of us, if we yeah. had to pick three things, it would be books, games, and subscription boxes. Like, yeah. I think we could totally homeschool with those three things and nothing mm -hmm. else. Like, no curriculum, no nothing, just a whole bunch of really great books, fun games, and all the subscription boxes. All of them. All of them. Everyone. Especially the science food one. Too. Oh, yeah, the food ones. Yeah, like we like food and science. science. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up. What inspires you as a teacher? I think what inspires me most as the teacher as, is the aha moments. Is seeing the, when the light bulb comes on. Those moments, those, oh my gosh, I get it moments, is like worth all of the in-between. All of the headbutting and hair pulling out and frustration and like dull drums and it makes it all worth it so even if it's only like once or twice a year those moments those i get it the light bulb comes on it's it's worth it it makes it all worth it it's like the best payday in my opinion and just be honest what inspires you is the toys no <laughs> i would say close to what you said but as a as a dad in the experience, normally I'm been used to getting up and going to work. Those hours that you're gone, yeah, you're providing for your family, you're doing what you're supposed to do, but what all did you miss out on? So I mean, for you, it's just getting to be here. Yeah, because, you know, when you get up one morning, you go to work and they're seven, and the next morning you get up and go to work and they're nine, and you've missed a whole lot in the middle and you live in the same house. So I'm going to go with being around, being, being able to experience, um, stuff 
in weird hours of the day or even at night because we do a lot at night. So. Yeah, we do, which is funny because that leads us into our next question. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I think this is no surprise that we are. Yeah, you're a night owl. I'm a yo-yo. <laughs> you're a yo-yo. <laughs> I'm a yo-yo. So you say that, why though? Well, because after basic training, after I graduated high school, um, and went into the military, every job I ever had was a uh, graveyard shift. Um, the whole time I was in the military. So I must have really done something bad, but I'm not sure. But they didn't tell me. Um, and actually, even when we first started dating, you were working graveyard, like when we were first all, together. All hours, all hours. And then every job that I had after that was, and actually as a driving job, it's, it's preferable because there's less people on the road, less aggravation, less supervision, less everything. It's a quieter world at night. So the only drawbacks um, is was that it's hard to live your life. Yeah, <laughs> going to the bank and, and, yeah. and going to the doctor and, and normal living stuff that aren't going to be open at midnight or after. Uh, so, yeah. But if you got to pick, not your job, would you be an early bird or an night owl? Like, not, not uh, influenced kind, by anything. Kind of a mix. My my best creative periods are after the sun goes down. For some reason, when the sun goes down, my, my brain, brain turns, turns on, on and I can do more artwork, um, more projects. And, I mean, it's weird. I can go out to my shed because we are living in the woods and I can produce a, a piece of furniture for a family member in the dark um, out of my shed and be twice as productive. Temperature-wise, it's more comfortable. Yeah, the bugs are a little aggravating, but you can deal with that. Um, but like I said, less interruptions and you just you roll through it. And my neighbors probably don't like the noise of the saws <laughs> and stuff, but oh well. Luckily, we don't have many. I think one of the things that I like the most about homeschooling is that it gives us that flexibility. Like, I can't honestly imagine the fight that it would be if we had to get Emily, like, out the door by 7 a.m. every morning. Like, it would literally never well, happen. that's not even realistic because most, if you look at a brick and mortar, most kids are getting up at, you know, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning trying to get out the door. Um, and if they're riding a bus, because, like, we live in the woods. Um, yeah, it would be if, an hour if drive. Yeah, if you're looking at an hour, an hour and a half on a bus going to school and an hour, an hour and a half on the bus coming home from school, that's a big chunk of your yeah. day and so you have to get them up bright and early and then by the time they get home they're wore out and do dinner and it's bedtime yeah so, that would never work for us yeah no. i would say the earliest that our homeschool ever starts is like 10 a.m and that's like a jam up morning like we got up we got everything ready to go like we got ourselves and everything ready to go but oh, more realistic me, I, take, I take the the garbage can and like the air force <laughs> i throw it down there and scream and yell and hoop no, and holler <laughs> And they just roll over, put the pillow on the head, and keep on sleeping. Yeah, no, so, that part would be true. We totally are not. No, we're not waking up. No. Like, okay, in all seriousness. Yeah. They, like, everybody who knows this knows that there's, like, a rule. If you want us to attend whatever it is, it cannot happen in single digits. And by that, I mean, like, 10 a.m. is the absolute earliest we're moving. And if, for some reason, we have to get up in the single digits, the only way that's happening is if you take us where? Where do you have to drive through if we get up in single digits? Oh, that's Chick-fil-A. Yeah, we're getting yeah. our Chick-fil-A. Except for Sundays ain't happening. Well, then we just don't get up on Sundays. No. <laughs> but seriously, our homeschool starts on average between, I would say, 10 a.m. and noon. Yeah, we have an understanding. If anything has to happen before that in the single digits, uh, volunteer. <laughs> yeah. Just easier. Yeah. No sense arguing. We are definitely night owls. Okay, you're going to like this one. What is your favorite teacher treat? teacher treat you can be honest okay rum <laughs> i get my vitamin c i mean i put lime in it but rum. <laughs> captain so, morgan makes the world go round it, it really does it definitely keeps you sane so my favorite teacher treat is peanut butter m&ms and i don't mean like just a few i mean like the really big bag that says share size that i most definitely do not, not share, share. <laughs> And Dr. Pepper, you guys know that. And then if it is like cooler weather, I really, really love a chai latte. But that's only for like three months out of the year because well, we live in Florida. 
This is so. great. That was for three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So do you plan and prep or do you go with the flow? You just do whatever you're told that, for yeah, the most part. It's safer that way. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. We'll just go with that. And I plan do both. To, she plans it to death. She writes it in stone <laughs> and then she pulverizes it and goes with the flow. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I enjoy planning and prepping and for the longest time I would plan and I'd prep and then I would beat my head against the wall when the planning and the prepping didn't work and it wasn't panning out. After all these years, I have now learned for the most part, I still have to remind myself that I can plan and prep until the cows come home because I enjoy it and that my planning and prepping is for me and it's because I enjoy it's it. It's therapeutic for you. It's therapeutic and I enjoy it. And so that's why I plan and prep. But then I know that I'm not, I mean, I'm very much more than likely not going to follow that plan in the prepping that I did. I mean, it may help me. I may follow some of it, but it's guidelines. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very broad <laughs> guidelines. Well, that's well, that's true too because we've embraced a long time ago that we do uh, like Emily led. So yeah. if you're too rigid and you have it all in stone, there's no flexibility. How can you be led anywhere? So I um, plan and prep, and then I follow her lead and, and go with if, the flow. If and... you're into something and the interest is spark, you just stick with it longer. If there is no fire lit, then you may move to the next subject. Or something may present itself that has nothing to do with anything you, you planned. Um, but that's usually the best time just well, to jump like, in and roll That's like with what it. the way Crayola happened for us. Yeah. Remember, we went to the Crayola experience. We had a really good time. She enjoyed it, wanted to know more. We read the book and we created the unit study for her, but that was not on our summer plans at all. No, not at all. But she learned really so much. Like but she learned so much because cool. she was interested in it at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I plan and prep and then go with the flow. So both. <laughs> All right. Last question. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what is something you really enjoy outside of being a homeschool parent? Well, I'm going to be selfish on this one for sure. Uh, the fact that my whole life, my whole life, I've been drawn to drawing artwork, painting, pen and ink, watercolor, pastel, I don't care, anything. Um, you can't do that behind the wheel of a, of a truck. Yeah. You can't do that if you're working. Um, so, you know, I've always put it on the back burner because, you know, you have bills to pay, you like to eat, not being in the rain, it's nice, have a roof over your head. So there's sacrifices that everybody has to make growing up and being an adult so now i'm being an adult but i get what i want <laughs> so yeah i my biggest thrill is the fact that i get to do what i love um and just like with her creating the curriculum for emily so it's personal and it's for her i can turn around and do artwork and stuff to throw into it and just make it that much richer but I'm doing what I love to do anyway. So it's, it's... I would say, honestly, it's kind of difficult because when you say outside of homeschooling, both of us there's really, no, really... There's nothing Well, we really, really enjoy the creative part. Like, I enjoy creating curriculum. Like, that is something I love doing because, like he said, planning is therapeutic for me. So I enjoy planning and creating these unit studies and these curriculum for Emily and then sharing it with you guys. Like, that is what I do in my free mm -hmm. time. And it, mm -hmm. it is work, but I literally am doing something that I could not love anymore. So while it's work... And if we work, were doing homeschool, I'd still be doing splaining. And you would still, still, still be doing art. And I would probably still be planning and prepping much. in just a different way. Yeah, and then we'd still be, even if I was working, we'd still be going on field trips on the weekends and you know, going to the lake or going to the beach or going to a theme park or doing something. You're going to be doing something. So it's just we have more time together yeah. to do everything and i think that's what it's all about being together and it's like what do we say team waldock yeah everything we do it's, it's a team. all three of us so i think the only thing that you ever do like for you even though that it is technically mostly homeschool related is art mm -hmm. and the only thing i ever really do for me uh, is, is read a book. Yeah. Like I love to read. Um, sometimes I'm reading so that I can write and learn more about the things that we're going to mm -hmm. be doing with upcoming unit studies or curriculum. Um, and then other times I'm reading 
total smut just for me. <laughs> like on our vacation, I read like six books there you go. and they were fantastic. I loved it. It was the best vacation ever. And you just finished an amazing art piece mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with school. It was just for you. And that's pretty awesome too, right? Yeah. And I'm ready to do another one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed getting to know us a little bit more. And I would love it if you would join us. If you don't have a YouTube channel and you want to join us anyway, go ahead and just leave a comment in the comment section and answer all these questions.